Hey, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be adding a second amplifier to our Yamaha. Now, as you know from my previous videos, I already have the RP150.4 ABM amplifier, which is the 1K 1000 watt amplifier, powering my six SCAR audio speakers, four six and a halves, and two eight inch. I am now adding amplifier for my swim deck speakers, which you saw in my previous episode, as well as in the future when I decide to do my tower speakers. I will have all four channels ready to go. I will only be utilizing two of the channels at this time so that I can get a little more power from my swim deck speakers when I want it. Whereas of right now, they're running off of zone two off of the head units amplifier internal amplifier which is the kicker cam c5 it is a premium unit it does have higher rms wattage than most but nowhere near enough to power the full potential of the scar audio six and a half so first things first as you can see from my last videos that i have an eight gauge kit right now because my amp draw and my run is under nine feet and I don't draw many amps right now, but the problem is, is now I'm adding a second amplifier. So I will have the 500 watt eventually running four, six and a half, just for now to be running two. And then I have the thousand watt running um, the other six speakers right now, the two eights and the other four, six and a halves. Well, anybody with a little bit of knowledge knows that I'm gonna be pulling a lot more amperage now. So what I need to do, is I got the Stinger Marine four gauge marine grade power wiring kit. And that that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to draw more amperage without melting wires or causing a fire hazard. But in order to do so, what I'm gonna do now is I have the Stinger power and ground distribution block. And what this is, is a split block that has a four gauge in and two eight gauge out on each side so what that'll do is my power side will have the four gauge coming in and then two very short um, less than one to two foot runs going from the distribution block to the amplifiers as well as the ground on the other side four gauge coming in and again two eight gauge coming out one to each amplifier and then lastly i have my stinger marine smrca2 twisted pair interconnect RCA cables for my zone two uh, preamp outputs coming from my kicker KMC5 head unit. And that is what's gonna go on for the amplifier to receive its audio signal from the head unit. Uh, so without further delay, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so before we get started, we're gonna need a few things to get this installation complete. First thing you're gonna need is, um, I keep a kit that I always use that includes heat shrink, heat shrink butt connectors, uh, terminal splitters, spade connectors, electrical tape, etc. So you're gonna need some of these products as well as wire cutters, um, a screwdriver of some sort or drill. These are called ferrules, ferrule connectors. And what that does is that cleans up your wire so if you use this on your speaker wire you won't have frayed speaker wire everywhere you're going to crimp the ends of your speaker wire with ferrules and then insert them into your amp which of course you'll need your ferrule um, crimp tool as well as your um, wire crimp tool if need be and a heat gun so these are some of the tools one other thing that i get and you can saw it on my previous install but i don't know if i put it up there this is at home depot these are nylon spacers. And what this does is it brings the amp up off of the starboard that you're installing it on, or if you're putting it on a wall or anywhere else, you wanna get some ventilation behind the amp. And these are quarter inch spacers that keep your amp off the wall. And especially in my condition where it sits on a flat horizontal surface, I wanna keep it from getting water stuck underneath and entrapped, causing rust and corrosion. That way everything can wash out clean and it can dry underneath there and you're not getting that moisture buildup with salt water or even fresh water. 
So I recommend these. Again, these are at Home Depot. These are um, half inch outside diameter with quarter inch length. So it's a quarter inch riser. Uh, it's nylon, so it does not rust and it also helps absorb shock. Um, you can use rubber grommets and you can use metal sleeve spacers like aluminum, but I highly recommend the nylon. It's what I've always used. Works fantastic. So yes, those are some of your basic tools and I am going to go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you get started is make sure that you have a plan on where things are going. Otherwise, you could run into an instance where you get everything ran and installed and you don't have any room for your second amplifier. So what you gotta do is make a plan. Right now what I'm gonna do is my plan is to move this over to where these wires are tucked underneath here, um, remount this amplifier a little more this way. This amplifier is gonna go next to it over here. And then my distribution block is gonna be on the backside back there. So that way everything's nice, neat, and organized and there's a plan. Also, just so you know, like I said before, I am going off the Zone 2 RCAs on my Kicker KMC5 head unit. Right now they are running off of the Zone 2 power from the head unit and these wires will be eventually installed down here on this 500 watt amplifier. So we'll have a total of 1500 watts on this boat, which means probably in the near future, I will be adding a third battery just to make sure that I have enough power to supply my amplifiers and stereo system for a nice full day out on the sandbar. All right, now that we've got a plan together, uh, let's go ahead and start getting things ran. And we'll start with the power kit from Stinger. All right, we have finished the install of the distribution block with the four gauge run to the dual eight gauge amplifier kits out. We have moved the amp over and installed everything back together. Hooked up the new 500 watt RP 75.4, ran all the wiring, mounted, with spacers so that there's gaps underneath, help airflow, helps prevent moisture entraption. And yeah, that's it. Now all we gotta do is hook up to the battery, test and tune. Let's get to it. All right, installation is complete. Let's give it a test, see how it sounds. <laughs> 